do, do you think it, uh, right now the, the, the discipline is accepted by mainstream economists? I, my, my, my impression is that a lot of them still don't like well happiness economics and try to contradict your findings. Yes, I, th I think uh, that's exactly the case. Uh, I think uh, if you take uh, the recent Stevenson and Wolfer's paper that was uh, the claim uh, that uh, the happiness income paradox was wrong, uh, there's a, a group of quite prominent economists uh, who were involved in discussions. Uh, some of them are very cautious, like Gary Becker. He did not jump on their bandwagon. But others were delighted to see uh, the, the result claiming that the paradox was wrong. So you, since you already mentioned this paper, do, do you think the finding that, well, there isn't any Eseline paradox, at, if you look at the data correctly, as they claim, holds the water? Or? Uh, their finding really is based uh, upon uh, a confusion of the short-term relationship uh, between happiness and income. Uh, and the long-term relationship. Uh, so uh, think of, of an upward trend in GDP that's of a sawtooth nature, going up and down, sort of uh, like a business cycle. Uh, happiness tends to display that same sawtooth pattern, but it's around a flat line, not a rising line like GDP. Uh, what they do is they take observations that capture the ups and downs. They don't take the long-term trends. What they observe is the positive relation that does exist between happiness and income over the business cycle. They do not observe the long-term relationship, which is nil. So what, from your point of view, is, is, is the most important insight of happiness economics? Well, of course, I'm prejudiced. <laughs> But I think uh, it, it suggests that uh, uh, leaving uh, the fruits of economic growth to be determined uh, by private decisions uh, does not raise people's well-being. Uh, and I think uh, in the talk I gave today, I, I tried to indicate that uh, uh, through public policies, uh, we could improve people's uh, well-being. Uh, that uh, independently of economic growth. So this is not an anti-growth view. It's that what we do with the fruits of economic growth uh, is going to have a different effect on happiness if we leave it entirely to the market and individual decisions versus if we use public policy to improve people's happiness.